lonely, really lonely. When you're depressed, man, the only thing you can think about is yourself. I did have a lot of people there for me, but I was just pushing them away, you know, not even giving them a chance. Every year, around 12 million American adults think about suicide. Greg Weitzel, star of the Arlie Warriors high school basketball team on the Flathead Indian Reservation, was one of them. Greg told two friends about his thoughts. They acted quickly and likely saved Greg's life. But for too many families and communities across the U.S., suicide continues to take a tragic toll year after year. Every 11 minutes, there's a death from suicide. We don't talk about suicide. We don't talk about mental health enough. The CDC is approaching suicide as a public health crisis because the rate in the United States has been on the rise since about 1999. In 2021, around 48,000 Americans died by suicide. That's more than the number who died in car crashes. And it's more than the number of homicides. Suicide deaths impact every state, community, and demographic group. So what do we know about suicide? And how can we do a better job of helping people? Science offers some answers. Okay. It is really important to understand that suicide has multiple risk factors that converge, that come together. Things that relate to impulsivity, aggression, experiences from the past, adversity, trauma, abuse. And it's not really ever going to be one issue that causes suicide. There are a number of risk factors that are both internal and external family history of suicide, a prior suicide attempt, substance abuse. And then there's these other pieces like unemployment, economic problems, financial problems, relationship problems, legal problems. All of these are risk factors that, that put you at greater risk of suicide. Again, it's important to remember that most people can survive and live through those. Some can't. John Mann studies the brains of those who suffered from depression as well as those who died by suicide. His research shows that differences in brain structure and function can contribute to suicide risk. To find out how that happens, he and his team examine serotonin, a neurotransmitter that helps regulate three important factors of suicide, mood, decision-making, and sleep. Specialized nerve cells, or neurons, release serotonin into the brain. Too few of these neurons, scientists once thought, made depression and even suicide more likely. They were in for a surprise. For years, we've thought that depression is due to a deficit of serotonin. And when we actually went and tried to count the number of neurons and look at the amount of serotonin that was in those neurons, we found to our surprise, it's the opposite. They have more serotonin neurons than the average person. But why didn't the extra serotonin neurons relieve depression or reduce the risk of suicide? In the brains he examined, man found that the serotonin neurons didn't function correctly in parts of the brain associated with depression and suicide. When the dysfunction occurred in both places, the result could be tragic. What emerged in our early studies was that one could actually see a set of abnormalities that are related to dying by suicide and a set of abnormalities that are related to having a mood disorder. And the two coincided in the depressed people who died by suicide. Man hopes to apply what he's learned to catch abnormalities before they can threaten someone's life. But the behavior and beliefs of people who die by suicide are also important to study. You and Morgan are in a postdoc office. Thomas Joyner's groundbreaking interpersonal theory of suicide identifies three common conditions that can lead to a desire for suicide. Perceived burdensomeness is the idea that everyone would be better off if, if you were gone. That's the perception. It's important to underline that word perceived because they're mistaken about that. The second part of Joyner's theory is called thwarted belongingness. That's the idea that you are alienated from others and hopeless that you'll ever reconnect. 
Though he was surrounded by a loving family and friends, Greg Weitzel was racked by feelings of loneliness and isolation. Thwarted belongingness is, is really just a long way of saying loneliness. They feel disconnected and alienated. Even if the exterior world around them is people. Joyner argues there's a third ingredient, the capacity to go through with suicide. Suicide's hard. It's very fearsome, physically difficult. It's really, really against our natures to stare death in the face. And yet that's what suicide entails. I was doing the best that I could, but in that moment, your mind is not working right, so. As we learn more about suicide, healthcare professionals are better equipped to identify patients at risk. So are members of the public, who can play an important role in their communities. Experts say asking direct questions about suicide is the first step. The critical thing is to ask them directly, ask them very clearly, are you thinking about suicide? Do you just want to die? Do you not want to live anymore? And I know that's really hard, and I know people don't do this often, and they don't like to do it, they're uncomfortable with it. Even doctors don't like to do it. Yet in some healthcare systems across the country, doctors and nurses from many fields of medicine are learning to screen for suicide risk by asking the question directly and routinely. In the past month, have you had any thoughts of killing yourself? Yeah, and it's really upsetting me, and I'm starting to feel a little like I want to harm myself now. Okay. Some healthcare systems are developing protocols to help people when screening shows they are at risk. Although screening alone can't prevent suicide, it's an important component of a broader suicide prevention plan. Strawberry Hill, we go. When we talk about suicide out loud, we give people permission to talk about it. I have complete belief that suicide is preventable. Do you miss high school, bro? Because it's really about us being able to give hope to other people. And with the right education, with the right awareness, with the availability of resources, giving people access, removing the stigma, and doing it with kindness and hope, we could prevent suicide. If you are considering suicide, or if you or someone you know is in emotional crisis, please call or text 988 for confidential, free crisis support. Thank you.